Hello! Thank you for clicking on today's video. Today we're going to be talking about hypothesis tests for chi-squared. Now, I already went through this in a previous video talking about the generic steps for doing a chi-squared hypothesis test. So if you haven't seen that, I would suggest that you go back so you can understand kind of the framework and the building blocks that we'll be using to do the chi-squared hypothesis test. If you've watched that, welcome back. We're going to be talking about an example today. Now, before I talk about the example and how to go through and do the calculations, I just want to remind you of a couple of things. One, hypothesis testing is a type of statistical inference, which means we're going to be trying to use a small group or a sample to talk about that large group or the population. Specifically with a chi-squared, we're going to be comparing two variables and we're going to see if there's an association or relationship between those two variables. And then finally, the two variables that we will be comparing will both be categorical, and that's a big component of the chi-squared. And uh, that categorical variable, remember, has the definition of putting things into a group or category. So let's get started. So here is the scenario. We have a sample of 1,669. U.S. American adult, so over 18, uh, and this data is from a while ago, hence the age and, and the variables, but we have looked at and asked each of them if they smoke and if they've ever been divorced. And so our goal is to perform a hypothesis test looking at if there's an association between those two variables. Now we're going to use the FRED method and remember that that FRED method is formulate the problem, review conditions, execute calculations, and then finally draw conclusions. So starting with the F, formulate the problem. Formulating the problem, remember we need the population, the sample, the variables. If it's appropriate, the parameter of interest, which we won't do for the chi-squared. And then uh, our null and alternative hypothesis. That's an additional thing from formulate the problem. So remember the population is the all and the sample is the small. So I have all US American adults and the sample is 1669. Now remember with these variables, it's important to identify if they're both categorical. We have smoking, which is yes and no, divorce, which is yes and no. Those are both categorical because you're putting yourself into a group or a category name. So we're good there. Then the null, remember H sub O goes with no association between the two variables, which is smoking and divorce. And then we will have our alternative hypothesis or H sub A, which will go with there is an association between smoking and divorce. So that's formulating the problem. And it's important to have these pieces of information because at the end, when we make our conclusion or we draw our conclusion, we'll need to remember what the population is, uh, what the variables are, and what that alternative is. So then the next thing we have is reviewing conditions. Now remember for a chi-squared hypothesis test, you have two conditions that both have to be met. Less than 20% of the cells can have an expected count less than five. Now here we have four cells, so each cell makes up 25%, which means for this two by two table, no expected count can be less than five, and then no expected count can be less than one. Now remember that the formula for an expected count is the row total times the column total divided by the grand total. So here for this first cell in blue, my row total is 485. My column total is going to be the 612, and then the grand total would be that 1669. <clears throat> so calculating that out, we find a expected count of 177.84. So remember that expected count is what we expect to see if the two variables have no association. Now for this green cell, it's the same row, so it has the same row total and then 1057 is our column total, and then again, that 1669 will be the denominator for all of our cells because that's the grand total for the table. Now, one thing that you'll notice is that these two cells, because they're part of that row total, their expected count should sum to that 485. So we can use that as a way to check to make sure we calculated the expected counts correctly, which there you can see we did. Now the cell in pink is a new row, so it'll have a new row total, which is that 1184. And we multiply that by the column it's in, which is the 612 column total. 
And then again, the same denominator because it's that grand total. So here we come up with an expected count of 434.16. And again, I could add those two together and they would add to that 612 for that column. And then finally, we have the observed for no smoking and no divorce. And then that's that 810, or excuse me, and the expected count for no smoking and no divorce. Um, 1184 is our row total, 1057 is our column total, 1669 is our grand total, and we come up with an ex expected count of 749.84. Those two cells should sum to 1184. Those two in that column of 612 would sum to 612. And similarly, 1057 would be the sum for that column. Now we have to check and make sure that they are both, um, all the expected counts are greater than one, which is true. You can see our smallest is 177.84. And then again, as I said, because this is a two by two table, you have to have no expected count less than five. If you do have a larger table and you end up having a cell that's less than five, you can do the calculation that sh I showed in the previous example to see what percent is actually then less than five. So now on to executing calculations. Remember that we're calculating a chi-squared and we call it that because that's what our test statistic is. And it's the sum of all of the observed minus the expected squared divided by the expected. And you do that for each cell. So for our first cell, we have an observed of 238 with an expected of 177.84 and then you square that difference in the numerator and then divide by the expected count of 177.84. So plugging that into your calculator you would want to put parentheses around the numerator and then square that and then we have a cell chi squared value of 20.35. So remember to round correctly and then we have our next cell, which would be yes, smoking, no divorce. And that has an observed count of 247 and an expected count of 307.16. So you would square that difference and then divide by that corresponding expected, which is 307.16. And I come up with a cell chi squared value of 11.78. <clears throat> now, one comment about this as the calculations are scrolling through, um, good to practice this on your own. So if you're new to, you can pause and do the calculations to see if you're doing them correctly and then uh, play the video to make sure or check what I've done here. The other thing that I want to comment about is that in these uh, contingency tables, and I haven't mentioned this yet for this particular problem, remember that the variable that's represented in the rows uh, tends to be the explanatory variable and the rep the variable represented in the columns is going to be the response variable. So for this particular contingency table, because of the way that it's set up, they're saying that the smoking status is going to be what um, causes you to be divorced. Maybe that's true. Could be the other direction. Remember, that's kind of a stinker of the um, of the explanatory response relationship. It's not always black and white. I'm actually going to rewind this just a little bit because I want to make mention that now that we have all the cell chi-square values, we're going to be summing them because that's what we do with that chi-squared. So right now I am going to sum the 20.35, the 11.78, um, and then the ones that were shown at the bottom of the screen, which was the 8.34 and the 4.83. That gives me a chi-squared of 45.3. Then we also need degrees of freedom because remember the chi-squared distribution, its shape is uh, reliant on that degrees of freedom. And here we do the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. So we have two rows, yes, no, smoker, and two columns, yes, no, divorce. And then that gives us what chi-square uh, curve it is. And we also know that we want the more extreme area. And so our p-value is going to be that area above. And with the table in the um, textbook, you can see that we would have a p-value of less than 0.01. If you're to use your calculator, you can use that chi-squared CDF function that goes up to positive infinity, which we're substituting 999. And you can see that's a super small number because in scientific notation, that would have been 10 zeros and then a one. So we'll just say that the p-value is small. It's very, very small which we knew because that chi-squared is so large. And so then to make our decision, 
Remember, when you have a small p-value, you end up rejecting the null. So we always make our decision on the null. And when we get to the next step of drawing our conclusion, we are going to be discussing how much evidence we have for the alternative. So our D in FRED, the last letter, is drawing conclusions. And so here we remember that we have rejected the null, which is going to make us say there is sufficient evidence. And that's because of the rejection, because now we're talking about the alternatives to suggest there is an association. That's where that alternative came. And then between smoking and divorce, so those are our two variables. And then, of course, for our population, which is all U.S. adults. So underlined there in the blue and the yellow, those are from um, the F in Fred, as well as that alternative. And now, because we actually have seen that there is an association, the best thing to do is to continue on and see where that association is or what direction. And so you would perform a post hoc analysis. So in the next video, I will perform a post hoc analysis for you to be able to see um, if smokers have more divorce or if non-smokers have more divorce. So stay tuned. See you there.